Ready? So we yeah. get a wave. Hi, how you doing? My name is Steve Houston, and I have Angela here today with me in the studio. It's a Sunday, and uh, I'm excited about having uh, Angela with us today to talk about a subject that I think that we get a lot, actually, or actually I get a lot on the phones, and she's the best expert to speak on this. So anyway, as we normally begin, my introduction is if you're new to the channel, my name is Steve Houston, and we have Angela, like I said, welcome to the channel where I discuss all things related to financial services, their products, compensation plans, uh, IMO comparisons, and the standard is, well, we always, anything we discuss, we provide documentation if we have it to back up our claims, and we allow you to decide what's best for you. So this week, as I said, I'm talking with Angela, and the reason for that is, is that we decided to answer a question I keep getting more and more and more, Angela, and that is real estate career versus um, mortgage detection and final expense, the pros and cons of both. And we're gonna, I think we're going to make this a two, maybe three video series because we're going to try to break it down. I also thought it'd be kind of cool to get comments on the video. Number one, that people can like people may either have other pros and cons that they can add to, the, oh, to it, and yeah. we can address those on the next video. So you got to be quick, because <laughs> you know, and, and put the comments in there. But for a ton of comments from all of you, the subscribers and viewers that are watching this video right now, and uh, we'll carry it on for two, maybe three videos, uh, and make it a real community project and maybe we can help a lot of people who are considering which way to go or maybe even to do both. So, uh, those of you who don't know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know Angela, uh, but maybe you don't know that some of the history, um, but um, she was in the uh, real estate business and still is, still holds your license, yeah. had it for a couple of years, and really was actively trying to succeed in real estate for a couple of years there. Uh, but what, since she came over to the bright, the, the, the dark side, <laughs> The, the, the light. You were, I think you were in the dark area. Maybe you're in the light. Yeah, Whatever. I think so. But uh, anyway, you're over here in financial expense now. But while since being here, uh, Angela's been a consistent top uh, five uh, uh, producer. She's become an expert on underwriting um, and uh, in product selection and uh, coaches all of our agents that ask for the coaching on the phone script. She's a bomb on the phones. It's a great job. Bomb is what the millennials use for good, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe bomb not is she that she blew up or is bad, but bomb is whatever. She's good actually on the phone and, and coaches a lot of people and really can kind of unlock the uh, uh, any, anybody's struggles that they're having with setting appointments using mortgage station leads and uh, and doing this business. So um, anyway, anyway, to kind of reiterate what the video is about um, is that during the, during the week um, people either. Uh, are considering real estate um, in ver versus or in lieu of mortgage detection, uh, or maybe considering both. And I instantly thought of you uh, because of your background and since you've held your license for many years and was active in real estate, because I know because I went through some of those open houses with you. <laughs> Brutal. Um, but uh, uh, you were doing the do, so to speak, uh, and then decided to co come over to mortgage detection and join me in this business. So what I thought we would do is to start this thing off and... Um, is discuss the pros and cons of each business uh, for everybody and maybe get some comments or inputs, like I said, from the, from the viewers over the next uh, couple of videos. Um, but what I know from being with you and close to you for uh, 25 years now, but even up, up close in, in the real estate business, was it's far from the Million Dollar Listing TV show. Yeah, and I think that that's part of the, you know, I, I think with any business where you are somewhat independent and you are kind of building your own business within a bigger organization or a bigger business, you know, real estate is like that, insurance is like that, there's other, you know, franchises, if you have a franchise, franchises are like that. You have your own little microcosm business, but you're building it kind of under the protection of, you know, bigger, of somebody who's kind of put other systems and things in place. And so there's, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to that. You know, you have lots of, you know, one of the things that I have in, in my family, even just over my, my own siblings or my, or my mom's, is I have, we have a lot of control over our time. You know, if I have something that we have to do at 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning, I just don't book something for 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning and we can go and do it. Um, so that's an advantage I think that you have with any of these businesses. But I think that part of the... Well, let the me write that down while you, while you bring that up. So, so go ahead. Oh, uh, so, so uh, freedom of time. Freedom so of time. So pro, uh, a pros of mortgage protection, and they both share this, right? Right. So real estate pros. Mm -hmm. 
you can keep going. So the first one would be time freedom. Right. And, you know, for a lot of people, that's a big, it's a big deal. And I think with time freedom also kind of comes that just freedom in general. You know, people who don't feel like they have to clock in. And, you know, one of the things that, that Steve is always passionate about is, you know, I don't want to have to ask somebody when I want to take a break or go to lunch or if I want to take a long lunch or a short lunch or whatever it is. Um, and so that freedom, I think, is a really big component of any of these businesses. But, you know, one of the advantages to mortgage protection over something like real estate, I was sitting here kind of going through a couple of them in my head. You know, one of them that comes to mind quickly. Are, they, are these the reasons, because I want to get into this, are these the reasons what, what you saw? Because I want to I list the pros and cons for both, and we, we can go through those. But I really want to know what... What was it? Why you came? What you saw in mortgage section versus real estate? So are these the pros? Ye yes. Okay. All right. Well, let me have it. I'm gonna write them down. So, one of the first pros that I saw, I'll be totally frank with you, was the money. So for those of you that have this, that have this very, uh, or somewhat idealistic approach to you know mortgage protection or final or insurance or final expense or whatever it is is the helping of people and helping families. And I'm, I shouldn't say that's idealistic, because it's not. I think that we do a great thing for people, and it always feels good when I leave an appointment knowing that I've helped a family or somebody has said, oh, my gosh, I feel so much better or, you know, any of those types of things. So I think that that's huge. But for me, you know, I had been in real estate and had done it all, every which way from Sunday. I had been with big brokerage houses. I had been with small brokerage houses. I had been with people that offered lots of support and companies that didn't offer any support. Very much like that, our industry. Right. The IMO. Right. Some, some, some offer a lot of support, offer a lot, some, some offer of none. Some offer none. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, in my real estate career, I, I was always struggling to the next home sale or the next listing. And um, that gets old. And it gets old kind of, um, this is kind of a side note, but... You know, it gets old not feeling like you're really, it feels like you're constantly putting on airs, really. I guess there's no other way to put it. Because I was struggling financially str and struggling inside to figure out why is this not working. And um, so one of the big, and one of the big pros on the mortgage protection side and cons, I think, on the real estate side is unless you are like a million dollar listing agent or you are really well established or you've been doing this for a long, long time, and you have some sort of consistency going for you, it's very difficult to struggle with that money thing. And um, Okay, but go ahead and finish your thought. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I did. My, my question I is this. Big. You saw I wrote money, money on both sides, because there's money in both of them. What makes right. this money different? And the, pro the difference really is, you know, in real estate, I mean, I even have friends who, who would say to me, you know, oh yeah, but you know, you're in real estate, so you're making, you know, buckets of money. Well. I had, a, I had a listing in a near t nearby town. Actually, it was the town that we were living in at the time. Um, that's a higher-end community. It was, a, it was a beautiful listing, and it was well-priced. It was like an $800,000 house. Well, the owner of the home was a real jerk. We'll, leave it, we'll just leave it there. I'm sure there are multiple different things you could kind of come up with there, but jerk is good. <laughs> and um, it was really, really difficult. You know, he constantly was screaming at me, and, and it just went on and on and on and on and on. And because of the stress of that particular house, I really wasn't um, focused. I didn't have time to focus on any other any other properties because he was just running me ragged. And it, it went in and out of escrow like three or four times. So by the time I was entrenched in that paperwork, you know, at the end of the day, it took probably about 75 or 80 days to sell this house. So that's almost three months. So my paycheck for that, the sale of that house, less all my fees, right, which we'll talk about in a second, um, had to be factored over the course of three months. So if you take a, let's just say, for example, let's just take an easy number. Let's just say it was a $12,000 commission. Well, 12,000 divided by three months is only $4,000 a month on average. And that's not a stellar career. And by the time, and, and it's hard to go three months without a paycheck, and then it's three months, then you finally get a paycheck and you gotta get caught up. So it just felt that that financial stress and watching other people get listings and other people get sales or having things fall through, that beats on you after a while. And so the advantage I think on this side is 
you know, not only are you getting paid faster, I mean, it's nice to go out and meet, sit down with a family on a Monday and on a Wednesday or a Thursday, the money's in your bank account. That's stellar. And while it may not be the same dollars, you know, you might sell a house for a ten or twelve thousand dollar commission, and you might sell a, a, a you know a mortgage protection um, application, and the commission on that might be you know a thousand dollars. They're going to cut. They come so much more frequently and so much more rapidly and so much more readily that it's much easier to keep yourself not only afloat but motivated, right? So I think we do a good work for families, but. If you're like every other person on the planet, you know, my bills get paid uh, with money, not with goodwill. And so you have to have, I think, a balance in there. Yeah. And so this video is already going to go long. We're going to split it up. Sorry. And, it's okay. Because I, because I think there's so many areas you can go with. I go, know. So I think what we're better off doing is let's, listing, let's start this video by listing some pros. Okay. Not dealing with the cons. Okay. Then we'll come back and deal with the pros of real estate. Okay. And the cons of both on the next two two videos, right? Okay. So we tried. So, but but it's not just money. It's it's the it's the fast. It's the fast. It's also right. the residual. Right. Right. There's no residual aspect in real estate, right? right. So and it's uh, and I know you guys can't see the board because I'm standing in front of it, but you get the idea. So it's also daily pay. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, right. I mean, with real estate, you're looking several months. That's and then it has to clear escrow. Then I want when it, if it clears escrow, how's the money dispersed at that point? So once you get through that point, then you know then you then everybody gets their little piece. So it's typically not too bad. It's typically within a week, I would say, of you of, of it closing escrow to when you're paid. However, um, you know escrow could be thirty days. Escrow could be. 45 days, escrow could be 90 days, and you don't get paid until it's done, period. Just like in mortgage protection, but you're not gonna have a 90 day insurance policy. So right. it's so it's 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 daily and it's faster. So. Yeah, and then let's talk about fees for a second. We're not gonna deal with it. We, we, are, we already know that there's a ton of fees in real estate, but this, to get started in mortgage protection, the upfront cost is much lower, right? I mean, yes. it's a license. But with real estate, you got signs you got to buy, you got an right. MLS listing key, you got to buy all these associations that you've got to join, and they nickel and dime you to death, not just up front, but monthly, monthly basis. to stay in the business. Mm -hmm. It's it's exponential. So uh, low low, there really is no fees, unless you. I mean, fees in real estate, fees in mortgage section, maybe. Maybe uh, E and O if you have E and O insurance. E and O but insurance. You have e and O insurance. I mean, I had to pay for E and O insurance when I was. See, a continue education. You know, you yeah. have a little bit of that, so you're going to be doing that every couple of years. So what else? Because we need to, you know, what else? What else is there? As the, for, for the pros over here. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot more pros, but but we yeah. were talking about more about money right now. So so um, we got the residual. Oh, and we have, I mean, this to my knowledge, well, we, we're not going to deal with, with real estate, but we also have a passive opportunity. So you can you can you can also build your own agency. You can do that in real estate too with Keller Williams and those teams. You can set up teams and make an overrides, right? Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, really. so so those. It's really not designed that way. So those are some of the some and and then and on the next video we'll get into this a little bit deeper. But you have leads. Yeah. That you can now you have to purchase this, this leads. So and we're going to do this on in the real estate section. You can get leads in real estate too. But you know, and you can do open houses and get free leads and that kind of stuff. But you have the ability to control your income here, whereas in right. real estate you really. No, and, and, you know, leads in real estate are really very different. I mean, these, you know, when you buy a lead in mortgage protection, it's a quasi-qualified lead because you know that they've already set up a mortgage or you know that they've already done a refi. You know, in, in real estate, when, you get a, when, you, when you're buying leads in real estate, you're really kind of relying on um, people that have shown or exhibited the potential of interest in selling, buying, or selling a home. And that could be all for naught. I mean, you could get somebody who says, who fills out a card in real estate and says, yes, I'm interested in buying a home, and then find out that, you know, they make $12,000 a year and they just lost their job. Well, they're not going to buy a house. They're not buying nothing, right? So, the, the, so I think that there's a little more qualification. I think that on this side, you at least have, uh, there's a little more substance, I think, to the lead. There's a lot more sorting that's already gone on. Okay, so... Plus, I think it's overall a bigger market. 
I mean, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, real estate's a good, it's a huge market because everybody, you know, should have wanted to buy a house, but they have to qualify for it and all that good stuff. Whereas we only have, we're we're somewhere between thirty five and 39 percent of people that even own our, own any kind of life of life insurance at right. all. And and it's also it's a bigger so it's a bigger market. It's also a much different decision. You're not buying a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar home. You're buying a policy for eighty five dollars a month on average. So. It's more accessible in terms right. of, of how much it costs, right. which makes the market even bigger than real estate because Absolutely. people that can buy a, can buy an insurance policy may not be able to buy a house. And it's also, you can sell that client more than one policy. So it's an right. ongoing relationship, whereas in real estate, they buy a house every five or ten years. You're lucky. Right. You're lucky. And so talk about that, and then we're going to wrap it up. And, you know, on the, on, the, on the real estate side, you know, when somebody buys a house and they have a 30-year 30, 30 mortgage on it, people are, there's already grumblings right now in the real estate market, in the, in the economy in general, that, you know, the market is slowing down because the Fed has raised rates. So if you bought a house today and the Fed continues to raise rates or the economy softens like, all, like it's indicating that it might, um, you basically have committed yourself for the next 30 years on that mortgage you might not have the option of getting out of that house, okay? So if you get to a point five years from now where you can't afford the house anymore, sorry, if you can't sell it, you're in. With, with mortgage protection or life insurance or final expense, um, if you buy a policy today to protect your mortgage, and I obviously don't, we don't advise anybody ever do this, but if you ended up three years down the road and you lose your job, and you know everything is crumbling and you absolutely have no way to continue to pay for that policy then you have the right to get to drop that policy and 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 save that financially right right, right. You, you don't have that option in in real estate so what you said is very true like exponentially once you buy a house people know you're pretty much committing to buy this house for the for the long term and with real with with mortgage insurance or life insurance a lot of times people buy policies for a really specific event they buy it to protect the mortgage they know they only have a 15 year mortgage they're buying it for the length of that mortgage and then they're going to have their other life insurance that will be in place for you know for other things loss of income or what have you so it's it's probably I, my brain is probably taking it a little bit further so most people probably don't think it out that far but but I do because I sit with people all the time who say, well, what happens if something happens and I can't afford the policy anymore? Then we'll find no, it's a smaller commitment level, but, but, right. but, it's, but it's certainly it's a smaller commitment level, but I, I, it's more important. Oh, I agree. I mean, buying a house is not nearly as impactful to your family right. than buying a life insurance policy that protects them after you're gone. Right. So the one thing you told me when you first started to think about coming over to mortgage station was that, uh, you know, it's not just about I mean, all these things are valid. And I'll, we'll walk away from the screen so you can see them. But um, you told me that I, you know, the time I spend, because most commissions, let's be honest with you, most commissions you were making were two to four thousand dollars. I mean, hundred thousand dollar home, hundred twenty five, whatever. So you could have, I mean, it took it took months to get that thing through Esco, and a lot of work along the way, and then have it. That's the other thing is that you're not. I mean, we we drive out to a home and we and they don't show up. We drive back home. That's a considerably less time investment than. All the paperwork it requires to sell a home to then have it fall out of escrow. So your point to me was that you can, you know, for the four thousand dollars I made in this house, it took me three months to get it. You could, you, you're making four, five, six thousand dollars a week right now, and right. and it's it's really a turn and burn. You right. you drive out there, you sit with them. It's not really a follow up. Mortgage station is not a follow up business. A lot of people want to make it that way, and I'm not, you know, it it, it just isn't. You 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 call them, you go visit with them in the home. If maybe if you're lucky, you can deliver the policy, and then follow up with them once a year. You're not, you're not checking back in with them on a regular basis. But there's potential for more sales that come from that. So you can you can sell three or four or five or six or seven, and you do policies a week, and the average policy being about seven hundred thousand dollars commission. That's considerably. So you're making money faster, quicker. Right, and a lot easier. Right? There's a lot less yeah. work. To do once you write the policy, a lot easier. Once you write the application, somebody else, you know, the insurance company really d takes it from there. I don't have to, other than maybe having a form signed here or there. You know, in real estate, and I don't care if you have a transaction coordinator or an assistant in your real estate business, you still are required to go through because it's your signature on that paperwork. So you're still required. I was still going through reams of paper and documents, and I had to sign this and go back out four or five times to the house. I mean, it was, it's a lot of work, and I'm not a fear. I don't have a fear of work, but I have a frustration of doing a lot of work, and then it falls out of escrow, and you start yeah. all over. And that's the key. Is in any business, you have to cash flow your business. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're waiting months to get paid, and it falls out, 
you've earned you've earned no paycheck. So you have to be juggling a lot of deals a lot of times. Whereas in this business, you grab a lead, you make a dial, you book an appointment, you you choose the products, you run out to the to the to the home and and you and you make a presentation, you turn the paperwork in. What's the average time to, to get a policy approved and paid? Like a week. A week if it's not if it's an on med, maybe even sooner than that if you're doing yeah. e apps. Um, so I mean it's. It, and it's the end of the year right now, so the carriers are. They have hired additional staff, and so they want to get stuff pushed out. So we have policies that are processed in like 24 or 48 hours. So you have to think of, you think of, you have to think of, think on yourself and say to yourself, yourself, self. <laughs> you have to say, you know, what is the potential, you know, in real estate versus mortgage station. But I will tell you this: is that we just we're coming up for our conference here very soon. We have 67 hundred thousand dollar year earners right now. People. And so, uh, you know, it's a lot of money. Well, it's just saying that you know you can make six figures here, part time or full time. And I knew it. I, 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 you were a couple of years in real estate, and we weren't tracking six figures yet. So, it, 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 uh, and that's the other thing. And, and again, we, we, we're, the, this, the, the analytics of the YouTube channel tell me that after about eight minutes, you lose your crowd. So, and we're at twenty-one minutes right oh. now. But. Um, It's just, it's a much faster process. I mean, there's yeah. no other way to say it. There's just, there isn't. I had and, a train of thought and I, and I lost and that's, it. And that makes um, it for a much more exciting business. It's, it's easier to stay motivated. Oh, and, I know what I was, was going to say was the things you had to learn oh my gosh. in real estate. Yeah. And and the exposure legally that you have if you don't do it right. I mean, you have E&O insurance and mortgage station you have it in, in real estate. I'm just saying that the amount of stuff you had to learn in real estate compared to this, I mean, we help all of our agents with product selection, so they didn't have to learn that. All they had to do is learn how to, how to, how to be very, very good as an appointment setter right. and show up, <laughs> right? And if you, I, 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 to the appointment, I'm saying. Right. If you do it ethically, you probably aren't, will never have a question, a problem in, 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 in insurance. In real estate, I mean, my God, the stuff that you are responsible for, that you are responsible to remember, and the things that you forget, and then somebody looks at you and says, I can't believe you... I can't believe you, did, you didn't do that or you didn't find that or know that or whatever. Oh my gosh. It was very, that, that, that part of it's very frustrating. We'll talk about that in the next video. Is the things that you have to know and remember and Minnie wanted that, to That was why I was distracted because Minnie was scratching my feet. <laughs> she thought she needed to be in the video today. But look, that's the first, that's, that's uh, I ho uh, you know, for, I hope this video really benefits people. I think that it will. Um, make some comments uh, on, below, ask your questions. Uh, help us with pros and cons. That'd be fantastic because we're going to do it. We'll follow up video to this again next week. Subscribe as usual. Like uh, the video if you would. Do us a favor of that. Share the video out to others that may be considering these two options as well or just the, the, uh, the industry in general. Um, and mash the bell down below next to the subscribe button and that will give you instant notifications of new videos that we post up. I, I, I've had fun. I think there's a lot more to talk about. Yeah, you too. And, uh, you know, happy holidays. You're going to have to wave because I can't. Uh, and whatever you decide to celebrate during this time of the year, be safe and enjoy this time. We'll see you next Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Minnie. Say bye, Minnie. <laughs> can, you, can you get her to clap? Clap. We, we're trying to train her to clap. She's pretty good at it, actually. Could you clap? No. No. No, I'm going to clap, Mom. All right, bye-bye now. Thank bye. you. We'll, we'll leave this up here for a second so you get those, those uh, notes down. Bye-bye now.